Hey, what's up guys? Today's video is gonna be slightly different to what we normally do. This is gonna be a much longer video. The reason is because I'm gonna take you through the entire car, start to finish, and I'm gonna cover things that I've never really covered in videos before. I'm just gonna try and be a lot more uh, specific and go in to a lot more detail about things that I don't normally get the time to do. I wanted to do this as like a special New Year video, but I'm a little bit late uploading the video because I've been very busy. And also you will notice, finally we have a decent microphone. So hopefully, hopefully the, the audio comes out nice and clear. So what we're gonna do is start from the front of kit start from the Knight Rider nose, and we're gonna work all the way back to the rear of the car. There's lots of things that we're gonna talk about. So if you're thinking about building one of these cars, perhaps you've just got a normal Firebird, a normal Trans Am, or perhaps you wanna convert it into kit, whatever the reason, I hope this video is gonna be helpful because I'm gonna be really specific and go into a lot of detail about the things that not only um, I've learned, but the mistakes I've made in the past and things that I wish I would have done different. So we're gonna now go to the front of the car and we're gonna make a start in the video. So it's gonna be a long video, get comfy, hope you enjoy it and let's crack into it. Hey, what's up guys, uh, here we are. Now I've got my microphone attached. I think we are ready to rock and roll. So we're at the front of the car as you can see now we're gonna cover some stuff at the front of the car and then we're gonna go back. The very first thing I will say, and this is probably quite obvious to some people, but when you buy one of these cars to actually convert into a kit, the first thing you wanna do is get the foundation nice and solid. With that, what I mean is the actual car itself. So you want to make sure that the car is running mechanically well. You want to make sure that all the suspension, the chassis is good, the welding's all been done, exhaust, stuff like that, suspension. So that is really the number one thing to do. If you're looking to convert one of these into a kit, then that's what you need to do. It's no good you spending any time on the interior electrics, the wheels, anything like that, until the actual car is mechanically sound and nice and solid, yeah? Because I see some people doing this and they start to focus, they start to put work in on the inside of the car, electronics and stuff like that, before the, before the car is even mechanically sound, you know, before they've even done the exhaust. And it's just a big mistake because you don't want to have to rip out any of the interior to do any work on the underside of the car or the engine, anything like that, uh, after you've converted it into a kit. So I would say the number one thing, and that can be, it can put you back quite a few months, but it's definitely worth it because when you build these into a night rider car, you do not want to have to go back over it once you've got all nice tan seats installed, the tan carpets, and once everything is basically running well, uh, you know, once you've converted the car, you don't want to have to go back and change anything. Obviously, it's, things do go wrong. I appreciate that, but I see too many people not f not paying attention and not spending the time and the money on the foundation of the car. That is the number one thing to do when it comes to building these cars. Now, I don't try and tell you one thing and do things different myself. This car is no different. I've done the engine, the engine bay is all sprayed. Now again, if you're gonna do the engine bay, if you're gonna make the engine nice and clean and polish it and all of that, you wanna make sure the actual engine bay paint is good as well. And that is the reason why I done that on mine. I could have saved myself a lot of money and I could have just left the engine as it was and not bothered, but I really didn't want the car to look all nice and shiny at the end with really lovely electronics, and then 
you flip open the hood and the engine is all uh, dusty, it's oily and all of that. Again, highly recommend that you focus some time on the engine bay and the actual engine itself because when you when you pop up the bonnet the hoods you want the engine bay to look nice i couldn't do this on my first kit <clears throat> because i kind of ran out of time and money uh, so my first kit was like a little bit of a a test and that was my my first kit i i did and i'm sure you'd agree it turned out really nice but I do regret not being able to do the engine bay, so I've learned that and that's what I'm doing on this particular car. So engine bay, very, very important, make sure you do that. Another thing is, of course, you need a Knight Rider front nose. There's lots of different places to get noses from. You can, of course, make the noses yourself or you can buy them already done from a list of uh, uh, reputable and trustworthy vendors throughout Europe and throughout the US and sometimes even in the UK. Now I'm not going to mention them in this video uh, but if you if you need any sort of information then just leave a comment. So the nose is very important of course you want it to look like Knight Rider so the nose is is a very important part of the build. So you can see in my engine bay in there look it's nice and shiny. Yeah. It's nice and shiny. I've done uh, the actual main engine, the, the block and everything gold. Uh, basically, I've done it black and gold because they are the Knight Rider colors. And just about everything you see in there is brand new or as much as I can change anyway. I'm not gonna go into detail about the things I've changed because I've done that in another video. We'll, we'll be here for about five hours if we do that. <laughs> So there's a lot of stuff I've changed. As you probably know, if you've watched my previous videos, now I've just changed my camera around so it's not facing me. It's a little bit too difficult to actually make the entire video with the camera pointing at me while I talk because there's lots of things I need to show you close up. So it makes it a little bit difficult unless I had my own personal cameraman which I don't so as you can see at the front there we've got the lights and we've got the Knight Rider nose the Knight Rider nose of course is very important you need to make sure that this is a, a proper Knight Rider nose there's different seasons yeah I mean if you want to make one that's entirely up to you if you're good enough if you've got the expertise to actually make one then you can do that but you can buy them already done they come out of a mold and then when you when they get sent to you they kind of look similar to this uh, some of them are actually gel coated but this particular one has been modified from a friend of mine that I, that I bought the car off and he's actually done a really good job of it this is based on in fact I'm not going to say it because I'll probably people will actually correct me uh, but this is a particular season two, I think, no, uh, two, season two, I think, two or three. And this has got like a slight indent just there. I like this type of nose because I just think once the actual hood is closed, it looks really nice when you've got like a little bit of a, a gap there, um, especially once everything is painted and it's gloss black. I think it looks really, really nice. So the actual lights, so moving on, we've got the lights. There's not really much to do here, except make sure you, of course, spray them. Another thing I will say is that when you spray the entire car, when you paint the entire car, you need to make sure you do all of this. You can see at the front, if I just get the light here, you can see there, look, that's all gloss black there. It doesn't have to be a showroom finish. I mean that is good enough that is nice and shiny once i give that a little polish it will come up lovely now all this section here that the light is now on this that hasn't been sprayed that will get sprayed once the rest of the car gets done so all the nose has got to be sprayed so if you do this you want to make sure that you do everything because if you don't spray everything at the front here some of it will just it will look even worse because it won't all blend in together. 
So if you're gonna spray the car, make sure you spray all the front of this as well. All, you know, even little things like that. Make sure they all get done because this is what I'm gonna do. I'm actually gonna even, I'm even gonna spray my crash bar. If you can see down there, look, my crash bar is there. I'm actually gonna spray that as well. All my painter will anyway. So the nose will come off and all, that will, all of that will get sprayed and then that will get put back on. One thing I will say before we move on to the next part is I know some people, when they build these cars, they like to have the actual, um, there's a section that goes at the front, okay? And some people, some people say that the car is screen accurate if you have that. That was basically used in the TV shows when they, when they used to tow kit along when they used to tow them along. Now, it's not something I want. Yeah, it's like a towing arm at the front and it kind of sticks out. There's like two, two, uh, two pieces of steel that kind of stick out. I've seen people have them on their cars. I'm not honestly bothered. If you want to do that, that's entirely up to you. That isn't something that I really want to do because I think it sort of spoils the look of kit from the front, uh, but that's just my opinion. If anyone had, you know, if, if other people want to put that on their car, that's that's absolutely fine. That's up to them. So moving on. So we've got the engine done. So as I said, make sure the engine is running well. You need to focus on the foundation and the engine and the suspension, as I've already said, because you don't want to have to be taking your car into a garage once everything is done, and you know, and then leaving it in a garage for so many weeks. I mean, you might be able to do some work yourself, but if there's any big jobs, if, if there's any big sort of like gearbox problems or anything sort of down below and you need to put it into a garage somewhere, then it's not really a good thing, especially when the car's been converted. I found that out with my last car. Now I will say that if certain things go wrong with the car, you might just be unlucky and just be unfortunate you know, even if you've spent lots of money on the engine and the suspension in the car, because, you know, as you know, things do go wrong and you do get the odd problem here and there, and that can't be helped. However, if you do make sure the engine's running well, the suspension is good, there's no welding anywhere, everything is nice and solid, the likelihood of you having any mechanical or welding or suspension problems is very, very small. So I can't stress that enough. So that is the most important thing you need to focus on. Now moving on from the engine to the next sort of part is we've got the hood. This hood is not a, this one doesn't have a, uh, a scoop. Yeah, this is not a turbo hood. It will be, it will be when it's actually finished, but at the moment, it isn't. Now what we're gonna do is just close this. All this area here will also be sprayed black when we're actually finished and done. So that's another thing I will say. Of course, everything under the actual hood as well, all of this will be black. You can get a brand new sound deadening uh, blanket online there's lots of places that do it online you can you can buy them brand new what we're going to do is take these lights out and then just put them up there for now because I don't want to close the hood and then cr um, crush these okay so we're just going to move these up here So there you go. So the hood's now closed. So I hope that makes sense. So the bottom line is when it comes to the engine, just make sure that you do the work necessary at the start because you need to make sure the car is mechanically sound. The windscreen, you can get brand new windscreens installed. 
If you're gonna spray the car, I would highly recommend that you remove the windscreen because again, this is what I'm gonna do. When it comes to spraying my car, I'm gonna take the windscreen or windshield, whatever you wanna call it, I'm gonna take it out so that the paint sprayer can get right inside there. And then once, once you get a new windscreen fitted, you can then get a new seal and put it in there and everything will look nice and brand new. So moving on, so we've covered the turbo hood. As I said, oh, I'll just mention one more thing about the turbo hood. You can get factory hoods where you have a scoop that has been attached to the actual hood from the factory. So it's all welded in place, that's all nice and flush, and you're not gonna get any cracking issues. What some people do do, and this is what I had on my first kit, is you've got a steel hood, but someone has put a fiberglass scoop on, on the top. Now, some people, including myself, have had issues with those because they tend to crack. If they're not filled correctly and they're not, they're not done properly, then when you start to close the hoods, it can crack all, all across there if you put a fiberglass uh, scoop vent on the top there. That is why I'm trying to get a factory steel turbo hood because I don't want to do all of the work, get it all sprayed, and then a few months down the line, a few months down the road, it starts to crack because this is what happened on my first kit. If you look back, I think I did briefly talk about that. So that's what I would do with the turbo hood. Make sure you get a factory hood. Now, of course, if you would rather get a, a complete fiberglass hood to save some weight, that's entirely up to you. If you'd rather try to put a fiberglass vent on your steel flat hood, then of course you can do that as well. I'm just talking from experience and what I've learned over the last few years of doing this stuff. It's a lot easier if you had a steel factory turbo hood, uh, turbo hood because you're not gonna run into any issues that way. So what we're gonna do is move back slightly. Now one thing I will just mention is the roof. You can see that my car, my Firebird, is in fact a hardtop. I'm more than likely gonna change this into a T-bar, but I'm not gonna talk about that at the moment. My personal opinion is I think it should always be a T-bar. Now, of course, if you've got one of these cars and you'd rather leave it a hard top, that is cool. That is absolutely fine. I understand because it can be a lot of money and a lot of extra stress to convert it. And you might not even take the glass out much anyway. And I know you can make them look like T-bars, T-tops, by, by having these strips that run across the roof. Again, it's entirely up to you. It's not something I wanna do. So I probably will change mine into a T-bar at some point. <clears throat> so moving on, one thing I will say is when it comes to the handles, if you're gonna convert yours into a kit like I'm doing with mine, I highly recommend that you just buy brand new door handles, yeah? unless yours are already working really well. You know, if there's, because you have to look inside and they have, they have springs and everything on the inside. Yeah. If yours are looking a little bit worse for wear, just go and buy a brand new set. For the sake of honestly, like 25 bucks, whatever it is, and the same as an actual, uh, the actual door lock. If yours is sort of, got a lot of wear and tear, just go and buy a new one and put that in. 
It, these, these are really simple things to change and it can make all the difference. You don't want to have to, you don't want to use some, you know, some old, some old sort of parts and then have problems further down the road. Because remember, once you complete your car, you're going to have door panels on here. And trust me, trust me, trust me, trust me when I say, once you get your Knight Rider door panels on, they are not coming off. And if you try to take them off, it is a nightmare because they pop into these holes there. Again, I've been there, I've done that. I've not actually had to take my panels off, but that's one thing I learned when I done my last car. You do not want to take the panels off if you can help it because not only could you quite easily damage some of the panels because they are quite hard to pop off once they go on. I mean, they will come off, but as I said to you at the start of this video, you don't want to, you don't want to start to take things apart once kit is done, once the Knight Rider car is finished, because the more things you start to take off and the more things you start to mess around with, you only have to have a little bit of dirt on your finger, a little bit of oil, a bit of grease, and because a lot of the colors on the inside of the car are tan, it marks very easily. Again, I'm just talking from experience. So, all of that being said, it makes sense to just make sure these are all in good condition, the lock's in good condition as well. One of the other things I will say is make sure your windows work well when you're at this stage of the build, or if you end up stripping your doors like I have, make sure your windows are in good condition. So give them a good inspection. You can see with mine, mine's got a little chip right there. So I've got to change the window. Again, this is the stage that you want to be changing stuff, like your windows because your panels are off, everything's, everything's exposed, everything is off, and this is the best time to be doing things. Uh, what else have we got here? We've got these things, we've got the outer, uh, the outer um, runners, these, these seals that go on the outside of the window. You wanna get brand new ones of these. Again, they're not that expensive. Don't try and put old ones back on because trust me, it won't look very good. If you're gonna be doing these cars, you do need to spend some money. It's just, it's one of them things. There are certain times when you can maybe get away with buying cheaper stuff and maybe saving a little bit of money but I look at it and think if you're gonna build one of these cars, you may as well just replace everything that you see on the outside. And that comes with all of the trims, all of the rubbers, the seals. Again, for the sake of, you know, a little bit of extra money, just buy brand new stuff. Rock Auto, Hawks Motorsports, places like that. So the actual seals go in there. These are the, these are the door rubbers. You can see, look, there's little uh, bracket things there that they go on to. So that's another thing. Make sure that you buy brand new rubbers and seals for your doors. I've got to change this window, as I just said, and that is gonna be quite simple. I can just undo that bolt there, undo that one, and there's a few other ones inside to do, and I can take the window out and change that. So make sure you inspect your windows because you don't want to have to be doing these once your door panels are on and your car is finished. These things here often need to get changed. These things, look, these are actually, these are just rubbers and seals that go on the corner of your windows. Again, these are important because these will stop any water and moisture and dampness and stuff. These will stop any moisture and water from going into your car and seeping in through your window. So you can buy brand new ones of them. 
It's quite easy again from places like Rock Auto. You can get lots of stuff from there. These as well, these are all rubbers that you can change. There you go, look. All come off nice and easily. Yeah, I'm not gonna pull mine off at the moment because I'm still using my car. I still have to drive it around. So moving on, what we're gonna cover next is the inside of the car, the electrics. So, I hope you're enjoying it so far. I've tried to be quite thorough. And I mean, the video has gone on now for over 20 minutes and we're not even halfway. So yeah, this is why, this is why I said get nice and comfortable. There's got lots more stuff to go over. So, look at the state of that. I'm in the process of doing all of my ignition barrel at the moment, and the way to change that is all of this needs to come off. It is a nightmare, but it has to be done. Right, what I will say, when it comes to the inside of your car, now listen carefully, because if you plan to do a kit or you know, maybe, you, maybe you've got no interest in building a night Rider, you just want to see how I do it, and that's cool. What I will say is, and this is what I've learned from my last car, is just like the foundation of the car that I explained at the start of the video, like all the mechanical side of things, the suspension, all of that, you need to make sure the inside of your car is very sound, when it comes to the electrics. You need to make sure everything is checked, everything is fused, everything is ran correctly. There's no perishes, there's no cuts, there's no holes, there's no breakages in any of the cables and the wires. The only way to do this is by going over everything in the inside of the car and check it manually, yeah? That's the only way to do it. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it and say, oh, you know, you can just sort of do it in an hour because you can't. It will take you quite a long time, hours, to maybe go over the inside of the car and do the electrics, but it has to be done. Again, you don't wanna, this is not something I really talk about in other videos because it's not exactly the most, the most exciting stuff, is it? When I tell people that, well, I spend hours going through my my cables and my wires, it's not exactly stuff to make videos about, and that's why I wanted to make this video, because stuff like this I always leave out. You need to make sure that you go over all the wiring on the inside. So you can see all my wires are exposed now. Once we've done some of the jobs we're working on uh, over the next few weeks, at the same time, we're also gonna just check the wires. I mean, when I say it will take a long time, if you cracked into this, it, it might only take you a couple of days. It just depends how fast you work and how good you are and how thorough you are. So you can see all the wiring there. All you need to do is go over everything and just check to make sure there's no obvious problems. Yeah. It does take a bit of time, but it has to be done. And this is why I think if you're gonna build a kit replica, if you're gonna build one of these cars, you need to take everything out like I have. Because again, the last thing you want to happen is that you put your night rider dashboard in and then you start to get issues, electrical problems under the dashboard. So then you've got to take everything out and imagine if your car was already done, it was already converted into a kit and you then had to take all this out and and take all the dashboard out to like it is now. Can you imagine how much damage you would cause to the car? So you have to think ahead in order to save time and money in the future. And these are really only things that you learn as you sort of build these cars and as you do, as you spend more time on them really. So that's the first thing I will say, make sure that you check all of the electronics all of the electrics, you know, things like, if I can just give you an example, so things like your window switches. Yeah, just make sure there's no obvious problems. Yeah, make sure all the wires are, are pretty good. Make sure, 
your stereo wires are good. I mean, all that down there, that is a bit of a mess. That's for my stereo. Yeah, it works okay, but we just need to clean things up and that's something we will do in time. So again, look in there, you just go through all these and just check and I might even label some of these. All these plugs have got uh, a particular use because all the plugs that I took out, all of the units and everything I took out, the ECUs and everything, they're in my garage. So I know where everything goes back. So that's another thing I would say. Moving slightly backwards, a rear view mirror. Now, depending what country you're in, I'm in the UK and we don't actually need a rear view mirror in order for it to be legal to drive on the road. So I'm gonna be removing this. I highly recommend that you take it off if, if you're allowed to in your particular country. The reason is because uh, Kit didn't have one, as far as I know, in the TV shows. Even if he may have had one in the odd TV show, I think they look much better without one. It's a lot more of a sleek design. And not only that, but obviously Kit in the TV show was so advanced that he didn't really need a mirror in the front because, you know, Kit obviously knew what was behind him, didn't he? Because he was a, a futuristic car, car of the future. So I'm not going to have a rear view mirror. Again, that will look slightly different when I'm done because I'm going to have a T-bar. And when I said about make sure you've got no rust, these cars do have a tendency to rot in the foot wells. You can see that this has already had some welding done many years ago and it's quite a solid job. You can see look, it's had plates and stuff put over it, but it's solid, you know, I've, I've had it checked over. I've looked under it, underneath it myself and it is solid. It's a good solid car. There's a couple of little bits I had to get done. So anyway, uh, moving on. The carpet there, well, I don't know if it's carpet. Let me just get a light and you can see. There he is, little alien man. Underneath there, you can see all of the underlay for the carpet, yeah? All of that has to be removed. Now I would go quite high. I would go up to sort of there, up there somewhere and remove it. Because when you come to replace it, you don't wanna, you don't wanna cut this too, too low down. You wanna be able to sort of push it all the way up, your foot well. So just take as much of it off as you can because when it comes to changing when it comes to changing it you can buy carpet which has got the sound deadening attached to it or you can buy it separately it just depends which one you buy so i would wait until you get the carpet you can obviously cut it sort of cut it to a, a reasonable distance yeah and when you get your carpet you can then sort of see exactly high how high the carpet goes up if you buy the carpet with the sound deadening stuff on the back of the carpet already attached it will make sense when you do the carpet but this stuff here this is this is actually separate to the carpet it looks like this is sound deadening uh, material which is about 15 mil thick by the looks of it and then carpet goes on top of that and i've already removed the carpet so moving backwards slightly uh, what we got here just push this forward there you go one thing i will mention about the seat belts so this is probably a good time to mention seat belts 
One of the things that I see some people do is they convert their cars into the kit replicas, but they don't change their seatbelt colors. They, they leave them at like black or gray or blue. Now that, I just really can't see the point. I can't see the point of spending all the money and time changing it to a kit replica, doing, doing the conversion, and then you still have horrible looking seat belts like this. That just doesn't make any sense to me. You want some tan seat belts. Now these are not the, these are not the right ones because these are actually a second generation uh, seat buckle. But my actual proper third gen ones are upstairs tucked away in a box, keeping nice and warm for when I'm ready to put them in. They've been cleaned and everything. In fact, there's a video on them, I think. So I would make sure you've got tan seat belts and tan buckles and everything. So it all looks nice and well, I, I don't know what the word is. I mean, you just want it to look all, all the same on the inside. If you've got tan seats, you've got your PMD tan seats, and then you've got your tan seat belts, your tan carpet, your tan door panels. Yeah, you've got your tan headliner, sails, rear seats, carpet in the back, carpet everywhere. If you've got seat belts in any other color apart from tan, it's gonna clash. It's gonna look absolutely awful. So that's another thing I would definitely make sure that you do. So moving slightly back, back to the rear hatch. I've been lucky enough to be able to find a clear glass rear hatch. If you can find one, I would definitely, definitely use a clear glass rear hatch if you can find one. I personally don't think the ones with heater lines look very nice. If you can't obviously get one like this, of course, just use one with heater lines and you can always change it. But there is a lot of work involved when you change these over because it's not just a case of just taking this off and then you put another one on. You have to make sure that it's been sprayed because this is gonna get sprayed at the same time as the rest of the car. Yeah, this is my spoiler and that actually comes off. So I've just marked this ready to drill holes in the back there so I can screw this on. Now I personally think these are absolutely beautiful. I mean, yeah, maybe I'm a bit of a geek. <laughs> maybe I'm a bit geeky when it comes to Knight Rider, but hey, I just think the clear glass really sets it off at the back of the car because people can then see in the back of the car a lot easier. There's no horrible lines going, going across the back. You can see into the back of the car easily and you can see all of the tan interior and all of the plastics and everything. It's just so much easier to sort of look on the inside. Uh, but I mean, once you start to do research on these cars and you start to watch the TV shows, perhaps you already have, perhaps you haven't, you will see that most of the TV shows kit did have a clear glass rear hatch in just about every single TV show that I've seen anyway. And it does look nice. So try to get a clear glass rear hatch. When you do fit these, they're a little bit of a bugger to try to get square. Um, well, to be honest with you, trying to get them to fit perfectly is almost impossible on some of these because unless you move this, you're not gonna make it perfect. The reason is because these are obviously 25, 30, 40 odd years old. And in time, these get pushed back slightly because these are only stuck on. They are bolted as well, but they're stuck on from the factory underneath and they're bolted. And what happens is when, when these arms get connected, over time, they push this back. This only has to go back 
a couple of millimeters over the years and it will throw everything out at the back of the car you see and what happens is one side normally comes back further than the other so then it throws it all out of whack so like this one here is slightly further back than this side so you have to find a happy medium if that makes sense and it has nothing to do with the gap at the top either because the gap is the same if we look around here the gap is the same all the way through so it isn't the top and it isn't the side the sides are all good it's just this it's just the rear the rear um, part of the hatch the steel section they are prone to some movement over the years but don't worry about it it isn't a huge problem of course if it's moved by like half an inch then you may have to take these off re-stick it and then and then uh, maybe drill some new holes but generally you can get these to still look quite good as they are again that's something only you can really decide because each of these are different there's going to be ones out there that are nowhere near as good as this there's also going to be some out there that are probably perfectly square you know even after all these years the one i've got is probably average it's not too bad i've managed to make it look pretty good even though it is slightly out i think this side has moved further down this has sort of slid maybe an extra couple of millimeters than that side but you can adjust it you can mess around with the bolts up there you know you can get a tiny little bit of adjustment and also in the actual motor so you can you can pull it down further uh, but trying to actually get these perfectly lined up so they're even both sides is very difficult as i said because they are prone to movement over the years so don't worry too much if yours is similar to mine you might be lucky and get a really good one and if that's the case then well done so clear glass rear hatch very important we will talk about the actual full respray of the car in just a moment we will get to that what I want to cover now is the rear of the car you can see there this is I believe well this is a screen accurate rear bumper I think this is an 84 an 83 or 84 rear bumper but these were on I think the 82s 83s and the 84s they might have even been on some of the 85s and 86s depending what model of firebird or trans am that it was but this is a screen accurate rear uh, bumper so that's all on it looks good make sure you of course have one of those because otherwise it won't look correct from the back of the car another thing you need to make sure is the rear blackout now i'm sure you know what that looks like yeah the rear blackout goes in there so these get removed and all you do is you put trans am lights in but you take the covers off so the lights sit further back and then that creates enough gap for you to put your blackout on yeah there's different ways to actually fix the blackout on the back of the car depending on personal choice and personal preference the way I did it in my first car, I may just do the same. I don't know yet. I will decide that when the time comes. Another thing I will say is the exhaust. If you look at the exhaust under the car, oh, where are we? And if you look at the exhaust, when I first bought this car, one of the first things I did was I got the exhaust modified and I got it changed. These tailpipes were like right out here, okay? 
Now, all the episodes of Knight Rider I've watched, you rarely, in fact, I can't remember any of the episodes I watched where his tailpipes came out the back of the car, as far as I can remember. There might be the odd couple of episodes, but most of the time, his tailpipes were under the car, hidden away, and you couldn't see them. So this is what I've done. I've cut the tailpipes at an angle, so obviously the fumes come down and they're under the car so you can't see them. Again, this is something that I highly recommend that you do because that way you can't see the tailpipes from the back of the car. And of course, in the TV show, he was supposed to, his engine was supposed to be like a turbine, a futuristic sort of like turbine type of an engine. So uh, I don't think he was supposed to have exhaust pipes out of the back of his car. <laughs> in fact, I don't think he did. I don't think he was supposed to have any exhaust pipes. So lots of new rear springs on the car. Well, I say lots of new rear springs. That's a bit of a silly thing to say. He has rear springs and suspension arms across there. The exhaust has been modified, as I said, and also a rear diff cover. There, look, brand new rear diff cover. And I will get the underneath of the car um, cleaned. It's going to have, it's going to be wire brushed, and then it's going to be under sealed. Yeah, I've had brand new rear drums as well. Brand new rear drums. The fronts have been done as well, so I've got new brakes on the back. Remember what I said at the start of the video, didn't I? I said make sure the foundation of your car is good, because if you don't you're going to run into issues further down the road and you're just going to have to put the car back into the garage or you're going to have to start taking things off the car when he's all nice and shiny, which increases the chance of you damaging the car and making him a lot more oily, greasy, dirty, increasing the chances of any scratches on the car, etc., etc. So this is why I say make sure you do all of this stuff before you start to spray the car right so next what we're going to what we're going to cover is spraying the car so when you spray the car of course you want it to be gloss black yeah what i'm going to do so rather than tell you how to do it i'm just going to tell you what i'm going to do when I put this in for a respray, I'm going to get them to take the rear hatch off. I'm going to get them to take the spoiler off, the rear bumper off, and all of the lights out. Yeah, or just push them in. Of course, the number plate will get taken off. The hubcaps will get taken off. Uh, I would imagine the fuel cap this fuel door will get taken off. Um, I don't know, I'll have to talk to them about that. The doors might stay on. I don't know how we're gonna do that. We'll have to decide nearer the time. But the doors could possibly come off. We'll see either that or they can just mask them up in there. The windshield or windscreen will come out so they can do all the way in around the windscreen and then obviously just tape up so the paint doesn't go in the car. So we're gonna tape, we're gonna be taping up on the inside of the car like that, all the way in, so all of this will get done. Those grills will come out, that will come off, all of the rubbers will come off. The windows won't come out, however they will get obviously taken all the way down. Uh, I'd imagine the windows will just go all the way down and they'll just tape up the actual door. The wing mirrors probably will come off the car. You don't have to take your vents off, okay? You haven't got to take these. Uh, you can just leave them on and just paint them in, in situ, as far as I know. The hood will be coming off, 
the front nose will be coming off and all of the front section will be coming off like as I said the the front section that I mentioned earlier yeah indicators will come out and that is pretty much it so they will come out as well now this is what I recommend for you to do when you get to the stage of doing your car of spraying it and, and painting it do what I just said because it will make things a lot lot easier when it comes to things like the doors you could leave the doors on and you can still paint around everything and you should still be okay that really comes down to personal preference I don't know what I'm going to do I might just get them to take the doors off if it's a case of they're going to take everything else off I might just say look while you've got your tools out as long as it's not too much hassle just take these doors off as well if they can because there is a lot of wiring in there so I don't know if that will cause problems I don't know if that will give them a lot more extra work I don't know I'll have to speak to the the paint shop when it goes in for a respray and see what they think and another thing we're going to cover is the wheels on my last kit replica that I built I had 14 inch wheels didn't I and yes it did look really good it did look good but these are 15s and although these are only the caps, these are not real wheels, I'm sure you'd agree it still looks pretty good. Yeah, I would definitely, definitely get 15s. Even if you do what I've done here for now and get 15 inch fi Firebird or Trans Am wheels, it doesn't matter what wheels they are as long as they fit to a third gen. And then you can get these caps, you can buy them online in some uh, different stores around Europe and the US. You can buy these caps and when they come, of course, you don't get these actual caps, the actual uh, bowling ball caps with it. It only comes with them. So they go on and then the way it works is there's bolts in there and that basically bolts this straight through and the whole thing goes goes onto the car yeah so you've got separate nuts for the actual wheel those bolts there all they do is they actually screw into the bolts that hold the wheel on so you're not reliant you know so you don't have to undo these um just to get you know you don't have to undo your wheel just to get the caps off because that would obviously be really silly so it is a good design. It is a really good design. And another thing I would do is make sure you've got a decent set of tires as well. And when the tires are kind of something that you buy at the very end. So I may, I may buy a brand new set of tires when I've done the conversion, when I'm completely finished. I don't know. I mean, these ones are pretty good. In all honesty, I don't think I will. What are these? These are Continental. Yeah. These are these are Continentals. So yeah, they're pretty good tires already. I don't think I'm going to change them, but we'll see. You know, we'll we'll see. Okay, we're nearly there. I know it's been a long video and I hope you've liked everything that we've covered so far. There's just a couple more things I wanna cover, I wanna explain. So once everything else is done, I've just explained everything about the entire conversion in this video. But once you get to the inside of the car and you wanna do the electrics, one of the things that I didn't do on my last car and I'm not gonna do on this car either is cut any corners. And I highly recommend that you don't either. If you want the inside of the car to look really good, you have to spend time on the details. There's just little things that I would try to always do when you do the inside electrics. So things like, if we could just sit in here. Yeah. 
So things like making sure that the electronics you use at the front there match the ones on the lower console and the upper console. By that I mean if you're going to use a season two or season one, season two front dashboard, make sure you use a season one, season two upper and lower console. And also things like the correct type of colors for the interior carpets and also the sales. Yeah, I've got a lot of that off eBay. Of course, you can look back over my previous videos and see how I did everything. Remember the seat belts always need to be tan. I know it's personal preference, but this is what I've learned and I really don't think it looks very good if you have different color seat belts to the rest of the car, if everything else is cream and tan. It just doesn't look very good at all. I see some people and it looks like they've been really lazy on the inside of the car and that's such a shame because the outside of the car can look really, really good, but then when you get to the inside of the car, there's certain things that just lets it down. It's such a shame. So this is where you really need to spend a lot of time and a lot of attention to detail needs to go into the insides of your kit car because this is what people are gonna see. Yeah, obviously you know the engine's good, you know the suspension and everything else is good on the car, but this is what people are gonna see when you go to car shows and all that. So it has to look good and it has to really stand out and obviously keep it nice and clean. And that's what I used to do on my last car. I used to polish it, keep it nice and clean, make sure it's always um, hoovered and backed on the inside. Because once you get any dirt or any, any crap little bits of oil or dirt, anything like that on the inside of the car, it shows up really easily because of the color, because of the tan seats and the tan carpets. So make sure uh, you keep it nice and clean. So there we go. It's been a very long video. I hope you've enjoyed everything that we've covered. And I have finally, finally made the video. It's been over an hour now, I think. So you can go back, obviously watch this video as many times as you want. And I've really tried to sort of cover lots of different parts of the build that I wouldn't normally be able to explain in a 10 minute video. Hope you enjoyed it. And I hope that there's lots of stuff that I've explained in today's video uh, that has really made you think a little bit more about maybe when, when you build these cars, maybe you've already built one, maybe you're going to build one, maybe you want to build one, or maybe you've got no interest building one and you just want to see how I do it. Whatever the case, hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to give us a like if you like the video. Make sure you're subscribed because we've got lots more stuff coming up on the kit build over the next 12 to 18 months, lots more stuff plus lots more other projects going on in the garage, as you can see. Hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment. If you've got any questions, leave a comment below and I will try to reply to you as soon as I can. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.